Breaking tonight, President Obama unveiling his plan to let millions of people who broke the laws of this land stay in the United States. And he is doing it without congressional approval, despite his past statements, nay, arguments, that he simply didn't have the authority to do this. Tonight, there was no explanation for the complete 180 he has done, other than his declaration tonight, I have the authority. Welcome to The Kelly File, everyone. I'm Megan Kelly. The president's remarks lasting about 15 minutes. Mr. Obama suggesting this is not only the right thing to do for the nation and for illegal immigrant families, but he does it evoking scripture and even President Bush. Here are a few highlights. Today, our immigration system is broken, and everybody knows it. When I took office, I committed to fixing this broken immigration system. I worked with Congress on a comprehensive fix. And last year, 68 Democrats, Republicans, and Independents came together to pass a bipartisan bill in the Senate. It wasn't perfect. It was a compromise. But it reflected common sense. Had the House of Representatives allowed that kind of bill a simple yes or no vote, they would have passed with support from both parties. And today it would be the law. But for a year and a half now, Republican leaders in the House have refused to allow that simple vote. So we're going to offer the following deal. If you've been in America for more than five years, if you have children who are American citizens or legal residents, if you register, pass a criminal background check, and you're willing to pay your fair share of taxes, you'll be able to apply to stay in this country temporarily without fear of deportation. You can come out of the shadows and get right with the law. I know some of the critics of this action call it amnesty. Well, it's not. Amnesty is the immigration system we have today. Millions of people who live here without paying their taxes or playing by the rules, while politicians use the issue to scare people and whip up votes at election time. The actions I'm taking are not only lawful, they're the kinds of actions taken by every single Republican president and every single Democratic president for the past half century. And to those members of Congress who question my authority to make our immigration system work better or question the wisdom of me acting where Congress has failed, I have one answer. Pass a bill. Americans are tired of gridlock. We have a jam-packed hour for you tonight. A top senator with some Republican reaction, a former Justice Department attorney on whether this is legal, a lawmaker who legally immigrated to the U.S. who considers this a slap in the face, plus a top Democrat from a southern border state. But we begin with our chief White House correspondent, Ed Henry. Ed? Megan, the president saying he not only has that power, but his aides telling me in private, uh, they believe Republicans on the Hill cannot stop him, uh, that if they try to cut off the funding for any of these moves, the White House thinks they can block that. So it is full steam ahead for them. And the bottom line is tonight, he decided to go it alone, hoping it will force broader action by Republicans when they take over Congress in January, but it might end up blowing up in his face. I'm told by his, his advisors, he doesn't care about the flack he's getting because when he came back from Asia, the the beginning of this week, he had a big meeting behind closed doors and said to his aides, do we do it now or do we wait till mid-December after the budget talks? He decided in the end, uh, privately, let's do it now because he's going to take flack either way. And he wanted to go on offense and start try to define uh, the terms of this debate. The problem, though, is he's starting to get resistance, not just from Republicans, but some Democrats, at least two Senate Democrats uh, out tonight saying this is a bad idea. Joe Donnelly of Indiana uh, saying the following, quote, I am as frustrated as anyone that Congress is not doing its job, but the president shouldn't make such significant policy changes on his own. Joe Manchin of West Virginia adding, I disagree with the president's decision to use executive action to make changes to our immigration system, and I disagree with the House's decision to not even take a vote on the bipartisan Senate legislation that overwhelmingly passed in June 2013. That last part important because in fairness, you've got this conservative Democrat Manchin saying the Republicans have some blame here as well, and that when they take over the House and Senate in January, they've got to move forward. And that, you know, the president's argument is the last four years, the Republicans uh, in Congress blocked him. What he did not mention tonight is the first two years he was in office, he had a Democratic House, Democratic Senate, didn't get anywhere on immigration reform. Bottom line again is the president tonight said, I want a rational debate, but in the next breath said, I'm going it alone. That's an interesting contrast, Mike. Mm -hmm. Ed Henry, thank you. Somebody tweeted out online saying, uh, debate, 
I do not think he understands the meaning of that word. <laughs> Just a reference, right, to Princess Bride, right? Joining me now to help with some fact-checking, Mark Thiessen, an American Enterprise Institute fellow and the former chief speechwriter for President George W. Bush. Mark, he says he does not care about the flack he's getting. What he does care about is the fact that we are ripping families apart. Yeah, this was, uh, the, the, that's really what he cares about. Look, this was a moving a beautifully written, a moving, and a deeply cynical speech. Because if the President of the United States really believed a word of what he said, he would not be doing this with executive, with executive action. I mean, if you, if you think about it, he, well, he's not trying to help illegal immigrants. He's trying to provoke a, refor a fight with the Republican Party. You know? And the money quote was, and I'll give it to you here, he said, meanwhile, don't let a disagreement over a single issue be a de deal breaker on every issue. That's not how our democracy works, and Congress certainly shouldn't shut down the government again because we disagree on this. That's exactly what he wants. That's exactly what he wants the Republicans to do. He is trying to goad the GOP into self-destructive behavior. He wants them to shut down the government. He wants somebody to go out there and, and offer articles of impeachment. He wants somebody to go out there and say something bad about immigrants because he wants to rally his base and he wants to make the GOP blow itself up. And so this was a cynical use of the immigration issue to advance his political goals. You don't think he's interested in winning Republican votes at all? Well, let's put it this way. If he had if he had given the exact same speech minus the executive action, this would have been probably one of the most powerful speeches of his presidency. This would have been a clarion call for Republicans to if he had just said, let's work together in a bipartisan way in order to pass this bill, he would have had a super majority of, of Americans behind him. Seventy four percent of Americans believe there should be a path to citizenship if people pay their taxes, pay a penalty and have a security background check. But 48 percent oppose what he's doing. So if he had said, let's do this the right way, this was a call for legislation as opposed to an explanation of executive action, it would have, it would have, he could have rallied the country. Mm -hmm. But he's less interested in re winning Republican votes than driving, using immigration to drive voters away from Republicans. Well, it was interesting to see that only the cable nets even took the speech tonight. The, the main yeah. networks, you know, the mainstream media networks, ABC, CBS, and NBC said, we're not taking it. And they said, and the explanation in Politico today was because it's so overtly political. I mean, even the mainstream media recognizes that this is just politics. I mean, it, and it really is kind. Of, it, it's so. But he got on Univision. He did get on Univision. On That's the night right. of the Latin and, Grammys. You know, coincidences are amazing in politics, aren't they, Megan? Well, I mean, I mean this is, you know, what does it tell us? <laughs> It tells us that he's uh, that he is interested in one provoking Republicans and two rallying the base that abandoned him in the midterm elections. This is a pol this is an effort not to write the immigration system; it's to write his political ship, so that they can control the Senate after the next election and get their get their ducks in order for the ne for uh, the 2016 races. This is a cynical use. I mean, these stories he told, quoting scripture, talking about these immigrants who had come here, and the, these moving stories. If all of that was for the purpose of a bipartisan effort then it would have been beautiful. But it was done in a way that is completely not, un, uh, it's unilateral, that is, is used to, is intended to blow up the process. He, he knows he's not going to get immigration reform passed. He talks about, uh, are we a nation that accepts the cruelty of ripping children from their parents' arms? Or are we a nation that values families? Accepts the cruelty of ripping children from their parents' arms? To me, that struck me as ironic because he, by executive action, allowed children who had been brought here illegally by their parents, their parents made an unlawful move, to stay. He did that by executive action a couple of years ago. Now that, the, that those parents are, are still ostensibly being told that they need to leave, he says we're ripping the children from the parents' arms. It's like, well, the only reason the children and the parents are separating, if they are ostensibly, is because you said the children could stay even though they've been brought here illegally. And who in his mind wants to rip children from their parents' arms? Republicans. Conservatives right. are trying to rip children out from their parents' arms. That's what the implication of that statement is. The reason we don't have comprehensive immigration reform today, why that bill didn't pass in the House last year, is because of his immigration policies. His last executive order spurred, the, spurred 50,000 undocumented children, unaccompanied minors, to the border, which meant that any pro-immigration reform Republican couldn't possibly vote for comprehensive immigration reform. And now he's going to do it again, create another magnet uh, to the border that's going to undermine reform. He he knows this is not going to lead to legislation. We've got the lawyers here, and we're going to get into his obvious failure to explain his sudden realization that he has the legal authority to do this after six years of saying explicitly that he doesn't. But I do want to ask you about his, re his references to past presidents, because he repeatedly, prior to this, the White House and its defenders have cited President Bush, uh, Bush 41, and President Reagan saying, and, and the president tonight said, all Democratic and Republican presidents have done actions similar to this one. 
Yeah, um, President Reagan and President Bush, 41, did executive action after Congress had just passed immigration reform. President Obama is taking executive action explicitly because Congress will not pass immigration reform. So it's the exact opposite of what Reagan, what Reagan and Bush did. And I love the fact that he quoted George W. Bush, which is the first time he did it without blaming him for something. Uh, <laughs> but that was, that was cynical, too. I mean, of, of all the times to pick, uh, to pick George W. Bush, he's now using it. Uh, he's, he's quoting him now. Well, this was, is a cynical it effort. It was interesting because the, those presidents did, what they did was they, uh, Ronald Reagan granted true amnesty, where three million uh, people received the, the right to stay here with the cooperation of Congress. It was a law. But then he needed to do an ex executive action to help implement that law. And then exactly. so did the person who succeeded him, George H.W. Bush. So they, with a law on the books, issued executive actions to try to implement that law, things that hadn't been covered. And then Congress said, all right, we'll do it. They ratified the actions, but said, but then actually passed another law that said, just in case another president is thinking about doing this, we want to make per perfectly clear, this is not your authority, this is ours, so stop doing that. So it's an interesting thing because that piece of it gets left out when people are talking about this situation. Mark, thanks for being here. Thanks, Megan. So, of course, the big question tonight is, is this legal? That's really been the debate all along. As Mark points out, the majority of Americans are in favor of doing something to resolve this situation. But... The question here is, does he just get to do it because he wants it, but the people's representatives who we've put in office say no? I mean, is that how it works? The, the House says no, we're not doing it, so the president says, fine, forget you, I'm doing it on my own. Ahead, we're going to dig deeper into the law with a former DOJ prosecutor, plus we'll be joined by a lawmaker who immigrated here legally, and hear why he thinks this move is a slap in the face for a lot of struggling Americans. And then, is the GOP to blame for the president having to go it alone? We'll put that question and more to Senator Ron Johnson, a Republican, with a response to the president when we return to moments. For all the back and forth of Washington, we have to remember that this debate is about something bigger. It's about who we are as a country and who we want to be for future generations.